Tonight, Eric Morales and Marco Antonio Barrera find themselves fighting for something more than just a championship. This time, it's personal. Fellow countrymen, but opposites in every other way. It's affluent Mexico City versus the tough streets of Tijuana. The classic stand-up boxer versus the body-punching slugger. There is no pretense of defense in this race. Few fights match the kind of intensity that occurred when Morales and Barrera met the first time. This is special. Considered the fight of 2000 by most ring observers. Here comes Morales. Here comes Barrera. Both men inflicted damage through the first 11 rounds. This is the primal beauty of true prize fighting. A late flurry in the 12th seemed to give the challenger the edge. I think Barrera won it. I think Barrera won it. But when the judges saw it differently, both men's careers changed in an instant. Since then, critics say Morales has looked less confident, showing enough skill to pull off narrow decisions, but without his old swagger. How many more wars can Eric Morales go through? At the same time, Barrera has looked sensational. Knocking out seasoned contenders and emerging as the man to beat after a decisive win over Nassim Hamed. Big left hand by Barrera inside, stuns Prince Nassim. Tensions have run high leading up to this event. Name calling led to an early press conference brawl. But now comes the moment of truth. Who will become the pride of Mexico? Will Barrera continue his recent dominance, or will Morales rise to the occasion and show why he's still an undefeated champion? One thing is for sure, after tonight, both men's lives will never be the same. for our main event. Eric Morales against Marco Antonio Barrera for the second time. Two years ago, these men fought their 12 round thriller at 122 pounds. Now they face each other at 126. Which man feels more comfortable with the extra four pounds? Will it matter? We'll get the answer in just a few moments from now. Morales versus Barrera is being brought to you by MGM Grand, the city of entertainment. We're refreshed Budweiser, the undisputed, undefeated king of beers. This buzz for you. And by HBO Pay-Per-View, the best in pay-per-view entertainment, brought to you by the folks at HBO. The Mexican supporters of Eric Morales and Marco Antonio Barrera are as different as the fighters themselves. Morales from Tijuana represents a contrasting segment of the population than Barrera from Mexico City. Economics, culture, personalities, and the first fight have created a rivalry between the two fighters and their fans. Both sides are out in full force tonight. As we take a look at the crowd here getting set for this match, we welcome you back upstairs once again as we get set for the main event. James Brown along with Emmanuel Stewart. And Emmanuel, there's no question that both fighters generally have a pretty excellent track record, but as we saw in that fight package, a little difference in the way each fighter is gone. Morales, not as impressive. Barrera, very impressive. Why? What's the difference? Well, everybody's body is different, and everybody reacts different from a beautiful fight. Evidently, Barrera was not affected as much as Morales. But I, the one thing that still makes Morales be so dangerous in a fight, particularly when it comes down to a decision, is the fact that Morales throws a lot of punches. He throws a lot of punches, and even when he's hurt or when he's tired, uh, maybe just think that he's uh, maybe losing a fight. He saw us throwing punches, and that's why he gets a lot of his close decisions. Now, you know, we heard Jim Lampley talk about perhaps we might see some different tactics employed in this fight here. But listening to the fighters, as I mentioned a few moments ago, <laughs> it's like it's almost expected to be a slugfest again. Barrera says, this fight is so big, I don't think that I can show all that I can do because the fight fans expect a war. 
Is that what you expect? I think it may start off for a few seconds civilized, and it may not even start off that way. But undoubtedly, it's going to end up being a slugfest because both guys, machoism and dislike for each other, and the fact that they both pretty much welcome having a slugging match from listening to their conversations means that there's going to be some slugging going on tonight. You know, oftentimes I know it's used only as hype talking about the dislike, but folks, it's intense and deep. All right, folks, for the national anthems, let's check in in the ring with Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. At this time, would everyone please rise as we will have two national anthems. First of all, here to sing the Mexican national anthem, please welcome Nico Flores. Por sumamente respeto, vamos a entonar el himno nacional mexicano. Mexicanos al grito de guerra, el acero apresta y el bridor. Y retiemble tu centro la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Y retiemble tu centro la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Siño patria, tú tienes de oliva de la paz del arcángel divino, que en el cielo tu eterno destino por el dedo de Dios escribió. Más de usar de un extraño enemigo, profanar con sus alas su aliento, si el clarín con su bélico acento nos convoca a lidiar con valor. Un soldado en cada hijo te dio, mexicanos al grito de guerra, el acero apresta y el brido y retiemble tu centro la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón y retiemble tu centro la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón patria patria tus hijos te juran Exhalar de tus alas su aliento, si el clarín con su bélico acento nos convoca a lidiar con valor. Para ti las guirnaldas de oliva, un recuerdo para ellos de gloria, un laurel para ti de victoria. Un sepulcro para ellos de honor, un sepulcro para ellos de honor. Mexicanos a grito de guerra, el acero apresta y el brido. Y retiemble su centro la tierra al sonor o oh, rugir del cañón. Y retiemble su centro la tierra al sonor o oh, rugir del cañón. ¡Viva México! ¡Y échale terrible Morales! ¡Sale! Y ahora, damas y caballeros, and now, ladies and gentlemen, here to sing the national anthem of the United States, please welcome recording artist Aeromis. All right, give it up for America. Yes! God bless America. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight over the rappers we watch as so gladly streaming 
Housekeeping now done. The stage is set for the rematch. Morales and Barrera back downstairs to our guys. Big George Foreman, Larry Merchant, and our anchor, Jim Lampley. All right, thank you very much, JB. You've seen it in the movies. You've seen it in books. You've seen it in every art form known to man. Larry, the sequel is rarely as exciting as the original. Can this one be? Improbable, but what other choice do they really have? Morales and Barrera are locked in some kind of mortal embrace. Both of them can box, but the goddess of success and love in their culture requires them to put it all out there, to take all the risks to win her hand, to leave something of themselves, some piece of themselves on the battlefield when it's all over. And that's exactly what happened two and a half years ago. And although many fighters never fully recover from such brutal punishment, it isn't even a question tonight. They must recover. They have to recover. They have no choice. That's because the public <laughs> demands it, as they themselves have both acknowledged. George, professional fighters like you can't help but be impressed with the courage that it takes to fight the way these guys fought two and a half years ago but professional fighters know better than anybody what it takes out of your body and your soul to have a fight like that. Is the money they're getting tonight, a million dollars a piece, worth the risk that they descend into hell again? No, you gave it all you had and you expect you had to give it all because you had nothing else to show them. Barrera has matured, he's going on to be an excellent boxer. Let's hope now that we can see some skills. Of course, Morales has always been an excellent boxer. We would like to see him uh, do something to execute it tonight. Let's see a great boxing match. We know they can fight, but I'm, my money is on a skillful fight tonight. Boxing match. It's their choice to make, as George points out, because both of them have the skill to fight tactically if they choose. They got it, but let's see a real skill, pound for pound, good boxing match tonight. Well, the crowd wants what they saw two and a half years ago. Sangre. And they may get it. Tail of the tape now or Eric Morales against Marco Antonio Barrera. And you see the three-year age advantage for Morales. One inch taller, two inches more reach. They both weighed in right at the 126 pound weight limit. Remember the original fight was at 122 pounds. And by tonight, unofficially on our HBO scale, Marco Antonio Barrera has put on eight pounds to get to 134. Eric Morales is all the way up to 137. Punch stat numbers, Larry. Here's a look at their activity in the first fight. Morales more active, Barrera more accurate, both in total punches, as you see here, as, as well as the power punches right here. So you can see how close that fight was, despite the controversial nature of the decision. And rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Eric El Terrible Morales Marco Antonio Barrera fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case a cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards after four rounds have been completed, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim, 
In a mini replay of the unusual circumstances of Memphis two weeks ago, virtually every element of what happens here had to be negotiated. The contract states that Marco Antonio Barrera gets to leave the dressing room and come into the ring first. Morales will be introduced first in the ring. This was important to Barrera. One of the interesting things of this cerebral warrior is that in his mind, he is not fighting for some sanctioning body's belt tonight, for somebody other's version of a championship. He, he refused to, to take the belt that is up for grabs tonight. He feels, I'm the best featherweight in the world. Nobody has to give me a belt to prove it. Put that backfire against him if the decision goes to the judges. Well, there is one official here from that sanctioning organization. We'll have to watch that. But against that, Jim, we have to remember that there may be sentiment on his side tonight because of what happened the last time. Herrera walks into the ring tonight, almost a two to one favorite, a three to one underdog two and a half years ago. Perhaps his victory over Prince Ahmed had much to do with this. So the Mexico City, the Mexico City contingent is on hand. Next up, Three days later, after the fight of the century, they're ready to do it again. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, uh, let's get ready for the main event. The moment we've all been waiting for, the rematch. 12 rounds of boxing for the true and legitimate Featherweight Championship of the World! Brought to you by Top Rank Incorporated and Forum Boxing Incorporated in association with your undisputed King of Beers, Budweiser. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission Chairman, Dr. Luther Mack. The three judges assigned to ringside scoring this contest on the 10-point must system are Dwayne Ford. Chuck Jampa and Mike Liana. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Jay Nady. And now, the two best featherweights in the world are in the ring. And soon, only one will be the very best. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with silver and officially weighing in at 126 pounds. His professional record is a perfect one, consisting of 41 bouts, 41 victories, including 31 knockouts and two world titles. Comes the Caballeros de la Zona Norte, Tijuana, Mexico, the two-time world champion, the undefeated WBC featherweight champion of the world, Eric. Terrible And across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing silver with blue letters and officially weighing 126 pounds. His professional record stands at 54 victories, including 39 knockouts with only three defeats. And he is rated by the experts as one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world today. From Ciudad de Mexico, the three-time world champion, recognized as the People's Featherweight World Champion, the baby-faced assassin, Marco Antonio. Good, clean fight. What is worth it? Hey. Work. Two weeks ago in Memphis, we had a great event. Tonight in Las Vegas, we are looking forward to a great fight. Not much sweat on Morales at all. Very dry. Face is warm, legs got grease, Vaseline. Barrero looked nice. Went on the chest. He's had a sweat going. And Barrero holds up a glove to salute Morales from across the ring. Ring the bell, Eric heart. simply ignores him. They go to work. Morales' attack primarily over the top. His most dangerous punch, the overhand right. Barrera traditionally relies on the left hook to the body. In recent years, he's added an excellent jab and a strong counter right hand. Morales has always been an outstanding boxer who always finds himself in a hard fight. Need not, he's got an excellent left jab, right hand and corner. His problem is when he backs away, he gets caught. Never learn to circle when you're doing. Deliver your shots and circle to the left or to the right. Let's see if Morales can do a better job of backing away at angles in this fight. Already, they have boxed in a more disciplined fashion for the first minute of the fight than was the case for any minute of the fight two and a half years ago. Now Barrera goes forward behind the right hand. This is a stand-up boxing match as is now. Morales can get the best of it. Keeps your balance. Keep your height and your jab. There's the first left hook to the body by Barrera. No question, fighting at distance, Eric Morales ought to have the advantages. As you That's said. why he had the, the odds favored him in the first time around. He's an excellent boxer. Now stick to your game plan. But he stands up so straight that he seems to have a big target area. No, you can't hit him up there unless you... Drop your waist just a little bit as he's doing there. Weave and bobbing is causing the problem. Very tactical first round. Mexican fans may not believe what they're watching between these two guys. It's so completely at odds with any round they fought two and a half years ago. Now they begin to engage a little bit more closely. Now Barrera gets the left hand to the body. 
and begins to shorten the distance between himself and Morales. If you're Ferrari, you want to get those left hooks to the body. Very important early on because this guy Morales got the better footwork. He bounces in circles. Take his legs away. Morales landed one shot a little below the waistline. Barrera ignored it. Referee Jay Nady didn't see it. Good head movement in the early going by Morales. And Barrera is making Morales make the fight. That's a mistake on Morales' part. You don't want to go charging after this guy. But he does and lands a right hand. to the top of Barrera's head by Morales. Those two right hands in the last 20 seconds may well have given Eric Morales the first round. When we go to the corners, where they speak Spanish in both corners, our interpreter is Ray Torres. Very intelligent. Okay, you, 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 you made a miss. Yeah, place yourself a little bit more angle-wise, a little sideways, and work your jab. You got a counterpunch. You come out and don't, don't have your hands so wide open. We got all the condition in the world. We need to do everything. You did well. You got a great round. The fight is yours. It's, uh, this is your night. Box numbers in round one, pretty equal. Morales 12 out of 39, Barrera 13 out of 43. Slow pace, average round for featherweights, 57 punches. In the first fight, Morales was often throwing more than 70, sometimes 80 or 90 punches per round. Barrera fought at the slower pace, maybe that hurt him when the judge's decision was announced. Morales got his hands up high, that discourages Barrera all, 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 always. Keep your hands up, and he just can't see where to throw. Herrera blocking Morales' of shots with his gloves as Eric chases him back. Still Barrera making Morales make the fight. Now he steps forward and drives a right hand through the guard. And a right hand to the body by Barrera as well. You know, you get into a fight with a man and you get a conscious of some superiority and then you come back to the ground. Morales is not a man. You're going to have to take it to him. He's not going to allow for you to box and play with him. Ahmed against Barrera was a counter puncher with nothing to counter. Morales wants to attack. Barrera is shortening the distance again and now starting to get to the body. Big left hook upstairs by Marco Antonio Barrera. Stop, 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 stop. Don't punch on the break. Now Morales starts to jab to the body. Yeah, that's what you want to do. You take some of the steam out of that balloon. Jab to the body. Blood on the nose of Eric Morales. Uh, there are bruises on the nose and under his right eye already. Couple of body shots landing for Morales there. Sangra, the first blood. Right on the bridge of the nose. Maybe the product of that big left hook that Barrera landed. Morales reaching the throw over the top. Barrera again gets the left hook in. Not a lot of sock on that one. Hard right and left by Morales in close. They nearly butt heads as Barrera ducked to get out of the way. again, as was the case against Prince Nassim, Barrera seems to be measuring his punches, content to box, rather than to slug. You, you did well, you did well, you, 
You did real good. Look how you left him. You, you got to keep the, the double jab. That's what's going to do it. That's going, that's going to get in. It's okay. Nothing's happening. You got to work a little bit more. You got to prepare the right hand and, and then throw it. Combination, three, four punches. Next round, just uh, keep working and move your waist a little bit. Move around. And the right hand with everything. Throw the hand with power. Move around. Lateral movements. And the right hand. Chess is a substitute for war. And right now we are seeing a chess match. CompuBox numbers in round two. Again, almost dead even. Morales 19 out of 50. Barrera 16 out of 50. Little to choose between the two fighters in rounds one and two. I like it when Barrera starts trying to be the boxer, moving away. Morales attacks him, attacks him. Though he's the boxer, he still goes on the attack. Advantage to Morales because this is a point system. Every, every round is going to count. Judges are looking at each round. And the aggressor normally has the advantage, particularly here in Las Vegas. Hard right hand counter by Barrera as Morales leaned over again. Different judging panel tonight than was the case the first time around. Dwayne Ford, the only judge who comes back. He was the one who scored the fight for Barrera. They trade shots. Barrera with the right hand to the body. Morales with the right hand upstairs. An alternative universe. An entirely different fight than the first time around. A right cross lands down the middle for Barrera. Morales is initiating all of the contact. He hits him and Barrera Stop. pays him Stop. back. Misses the shot. He doesn't even try to get his balance back. He continues on con trying to land that shot that he intended to land originally, even if he's off balance. And that's when Barrera pops him. Barrera well, that's what taking you advantage. Do. You want to grab the real estate and keep it. And that's what Morales does. Morales chasing Barrera across the ring. Barrera cautiously staying away. what Morales derided Barrera for coming into the fight is his style. He says, he never attacks me, he just waits. So far in the first few rounds, Morales is right. Barrera waiting on him. And Barrera snapping the jab as Morales comes forward. Conserve energy for the long haul, and Barrera may be conserving a little more with his stop. A little more jab. Jab. And you're going to stop him when you hit him with the jab. We're doing well. Your, your left hand. That's, that's what you need. When he comes in, he's going to be in the jab. Deep breath now. You gotta put pressure on him. He's gonna go. You're gonna score a knockdown. Let's let's press you more. Let's be more aggressive. Don't let make him a chance. So far we haven't had much drama in this fight. A collision of heads. No consequence. No, the biggest difference 
thoughts numerically between this fight and the first is that Eric Morales for the moment is throwing 30 punches fewer per round than was the case two and a half years ago. Two and a half years ago at this time he had thrown 89 more punches than he has launched tonight. Clearly trying to conserve energy for the later rounds. Harold Letterman, how do you have it so far? <laughs> okay, Jim. I got a 29-28, two rounds to one, Eric Morales. You know, I always thought of Marco Antonio Pereira as a walking bag, a flat-footed, hard-hitter, great left hooker. I'm not used to, to him just running away like this, circling constantly, backing up, you know, moving to either side, flicking out an occasional jab. I like the aggressiveness of Eric Morales so far. I thought he was... He's won rounds one and three on the aggressiveness you're looking at right now. Barrera just backing away, not getting flat through, not landing the hard shots. I have it one round apiece and one even. I like Morales. He keeps that. Uh -oh, he drops it a little bit. The left hand. He pays. But he keeps his right hand right up by the chin. Right now, it appears that neither fighter wants to go through the hell of their first fight. No question. No, Morales is trying his best to pick a fight. Just not happening back. I think there's no question that, that Eric would like the pace of the first fight and the aggression of the first fight more than would Marco Antonio. Marco Antonio has added some wrinkles to his game in the two and a half intervening years, and they give him some options that maybe he didn't have then. You can see Morales definitely didn't want to fight. He doesn't let it breathe. This guy gets away from him. Herrera, who used to put so much on every punch, throwing a lot of just simple arm shots. Yeah, he's trying to conserve his energy as you. He realizes that this fight can get out of control. And he's landing for the sake of landing and keeping things under control. Herrera wants to pick the fight up in the middle round. It's going to get hard to think that the judges can give you the fight if you win the last three rounds. When Eric Morales really gets it going, I call him the Air Force because so much of the offense comes straight over the top. And there's a big left hook upstairs. Best punch of the fight for Morales. He tries Box. to follow up behind Box. it. Box. Morales landed those two right hands toward the end of the first round, and now this left hook. Herrera blocks a right hand shot there. Morales better be careful. You don't follow a boxer around, a punch around with your hands down. Give me the ice bag. Uh, you stay right there. Yes. Deep breath. Uh, like get some air through the mouth. Open your mouth. You see, round by round, the jab is working. We're going to win. Wait, wait, when you tie him up, hit him down in the body. Yeah, tie him up and hit him in the body. Both fighters fighting within themselves. That punch, although it didn't seem like much, probably counts for more than it should because it's exceptional in this fight. As round five begins, Marco Antonio Barrera with his cautious early fight plan may have given Eric Morales a solid early lead on the scorecards as Morales has been the aggressor and has seized the initiative so far in the fight. We have seen Herrera become more of a versatile boxer puncher over the last couple of years. The question here is whether that's the right style for this fight. He was successful with his other style. He's not being successful now. What happened in the first boxing match, Morales did not expect to get what he got out of Barrera. This is a different day. These guys have ultra respect. And this Morales is using his height, keeping his hands up when he's attacked. 
He has respect, and that changed everything. Booze from the Tijuanans here to support Morales and disturbed that Barrera is fighting such a cautious and passive fight that they're not getting the warfare they might have wanted. Morales reaching and landing with the right hand. And a chopping right hand for Barrera. Barrera's going back to the old habits of dropping his hands as he moved back. That's been the problem. That was a problem in the first fight. After the exchange, he gets hit. Marco Antonio doesn't feel, it seems as though he has to land the combination until Morales lands something against him. Now he throws a three-punch combination. A far cry from the fifth round of the first fight. Stop! Let go, don't punch. Box. Locked. Stop! Good left hand to the body. Mady says keep it up. Box. But the effect is there. The first fight was when we were fools. This fight is now that we are millionaires. <laughs> well said, George. They're fighting like guys with a lot more money in the back. I'm telling you, that million dollar purse, I'd like one of those. Eric Morales stalking and attacking with the right hand. Herrera being forced to fight. Confused by the tapping of the 10-second board, Morales stopped. Now he tries to come back, and suddenly, the fight breaks out. That's what this crowd was looking for. I don't think any of that amounted to a whole lot, but at least there was some drama in it. It amounted to a lot. Tells you, don't turn your back on Barrera. <laughs> no mercy. Deep breath, deep, deep, deep breath through the mouth, please. Come on, very intelligent. Hard round to score and a critical round because if Barrera lost it, he might be down four rounds to one early. What's the matter? What's the matter? You're not doing too much in the first half. Come on, we got to go. We got to do something. We, we got to do it. Oh, that an experienced fighter like Morales would be confused by the 10 second warning, but he was. Perhaps that woke up Barrera because he seems to have been in a tactical trance for the last couple of rounds. Barrera landed only eight of 37 punches in the round. Morales 15 out of 49. You can see that Harold Letterman already has Morales winning for the first drive, five rounds in the fight. Herrera starts to dig that left hand to the body. Herrera looks like he's ready now stop, to go stop. to work. Stop. He realizes like that Herrera lost his thought. temper. Temper that uh, Morales turned his back on him. Now he's mad. How dare you try not to fight me in the middle of a round? But he hadn't fought that way up to that moment. Now Barrera starting to come forward and attack. Stop! Break! That's what we haven't seen all we haven't seen all night is Morales with his back on the rope. You don't want that now. Ebb and flow, shifting tides of fortune. Barrera feeling some sense of urgency after a relatively passive first five rounds starts to come ahead. Morales has been very successful about keeping his back off the rope. Good right hand by Barrera. Morales dropping his hands. Marco Antonio taking advantage. Morales looks at Jay Nady as if to say he's still hitting me low. Nady says go back and fight. He won Barrera. Morales playing the part of the counter puncher now. Left uppercut if you hit me with your jab. To try to make him stop throwing his jab to the body. Over 
Brazos does well if he keeps this a boxing match, keeps his hands up, get that jab going. Different fight now than it was in the first five rounds. Look at Barrera shortening the distance and unloading the left hand. It's a fight now. And Morales seemingly a little back on his heels as Barrera totally changes his tactics. He's waiting for that 10 second one. Uppercut lands for Barrera. Barrera right hands on Morales. You're going to see something once they clap those sticks together. Barrera gets hungry. There are the sticks. Ten seconds to go. Let's see if either fighter flurries to try to steal a close round. Barrera is the aggressor in round six. can't go back. You can't work backwards. Don't lower your hands. When, when you pressure, he doesn't need nothing. Dry his gloves. They're wet. Put some water in his balls. You got a jab, move lateral. Yeah. You got to be loose and strong. Barrera getting a little bit rough in here. He has to fight a rougher fight. He's been staying at a distance. The way he fought so brilliantly two and a half years ago was simply by jumping into Morales' face and taking advantage of the fact that Morales has had throws longer punches. It may not have looked that way, but CompuBox numbers heavily favored Morales in round number six. He landed 25 out of 58 punches to 13 out of 45 for Barrera. Harold, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim. Uh, you know, for in rounds three, four, and five, Marco Antonio Barrera was on his toes running away as I saw it. But in round six, I don't give a darn how many punches he landed. He went flat-footed. He was the old Marco Antonio Barrera, and he landed with power. So I gave him the sixth round. I'm also giving him the second round. Four rounds to two, Eric Morales, 58, 56 of points. But Barrera, when he goes flat-footed, is coming on. This is the sixth fight that Eric Morales has had since their first meeting in Feb 2000. And this is by far the best Morales has looked in any of those six fights. That's what his fans and supporters predicted. His corner has warned him, Morales, don't fight backing up. You can't do it that way. He's got to keep that fight coming to Barrera. Well, if they're both going to go forward, then the combustion is coming. No, you circle. You make a circle. Get in a circle. Can't be straight back. Barrera sharp again with the right hand. Morales takes advantage as Barrera's off balance. Hard body shot down, and it's not going to be ruled a knockdown. Jay Nady's going to call it a slip. But looked for a moment like a knockdown on a body shot. Nagy, I believe, believed that Barrera was simply off balance. It could have been scored a knockdown. Jay Nady is one of the best. I can give you that. He pointed to the feet as if to say that Morales had his foot on Barrera's shoe. Well, Barrera's got to know that he's got to keep that fight on the rope. He seems momentarily unnerved by that turn of events, and Morales landed a big one, too. This is the best round of the fight so far. They have both had their moments. That's an excellent jab that Morales does not use enough. And 
he's beating Barrera to the punch with it, stopping Marco Antonio before he can start his attack. They trade shots at close range again. How come you're opening your mouth? Come on. Give, give me the, give me the end swell. I got him a Do something. Come on, you gotta be loose. Deep breaths. Come on. Okay, it's round eight coming up. You got to fight all the way. Rare is trying to seize the initiative, landed a good right hand, perhaps his best punch of the fight. And later he went down. I don't see any any reason that that should not have been called a knockdown. There was a slight brush of the feet, so Nagy, give him credit. He caught it. He that was a it. slip. That was a slip. Morales with a 12-7 edge and there. power connects in the seventh round. Herrera has been economical, and therefore Morales has thrown and landed more through the first seven rounds of the fight. The referee know these fighters, and he understands that you're not going to just knock a Barrera down with a body shot like that. There had to be something involved, and he's at the heels. Five rounds to go, and it would appear that Morales might have a working margin on the scorecards. And he chases Barrera around the ring. Barrera seeming to allow Morales to use some energy. Unfurls that big left hook. That punch landed on the ear of Morales and seemed to bother him. Morales is just surprised that he can win a boxing match tonight. It's out there for him. All he has to do is take the initiative, go out and win a boxing match. Barrera is not going to slug it out and fight with him. You're going to have to take it by points. Why shouldn't Barrera slug it out with it? He just, for some reason, has decided he doesn't want to do it. All right, well, then we're finding out that some of the pieces that were left in the ring of themselves two and a half years ago are still there, that they have not fully recovered. They don't want to go through that kind of grind and punishment again. Well, Everybody's interested. He's very interested. Everybody thought it was Morales who might have had trouble recovering from the first fight. Maybe the change in Barrera's style isn't conducive Stop, no, no, to no, going no, to no. war against Eric Morales. No, no knockdown there. cannot afford a point deduction. The referee understands that this is a very important fight and he does not want to be pushed in a position where he's going to decide who's the winner, but he wants the fight to be fought out in the ring. That's a great move. Great move by the referee. Jane has had two previous big fights. Costa Sue against Zab Judah. And prior to that, he was the referee for Fernando Vargas against Felix Trinidad here. Another right hand to the body by uh, Morales. And once again, Barrera goes back to the passive style that he demonstrated in the first five rounds. So far, we've worked ourselves up to this fight for nothing. Hey, these guys get paid the box. Larry, don't blame them because they have a brain. I wouldn't like, exactly like call it a tin man. I, I wouldn't exactly call fight. it nothing. Just because it isn't what it was two and a half years ago doesn't mean it's nothing. It's something now. Barrera lands three vicious hard shots. A left oh, hand around. Go for it. <laughs> Barrera's fully engaged now, and he probably won the round with that vicious flurry toward the end. That, that's it, Marco. You got him now. Yeah, everything's fine. Yeah. You got him now. You're the one that's healthy. Mar I feel good. I feel real good. You know what we worked on? Ninth round. Come on, don't be overconfident now. Be careful. 
But you got to throw it. We got enough conditioning. We got enough stamina. Go for it. There's a cut on Morales' right eye. It was ruled that it happened by a punch. Happened toward the end of the round when Barrera landed that big left hook. Second down. Morales with the edge and power shots landed through the eighth round. 74 to 48 by CompuBox numbers. Barrera landing the bigger punches now as we come into the night. Morales' right eye is seems to be closing. And he's on the defensive as Barrera tries to attack again. Barrera's got control of the fight. He's got to take it. Don't wait around and Lada's got to get his courage. Great counter left hand by Barrera. Blocked Morales' shots and caught him with that little arm. Morales is once again stunned, and now he lands a big right hand. Stop, stop. Good short left hand inside, Come almost on. out of view by Barrera. Blood now from the mouth of Morales, I believe. And the right eye is swelling shut. If Morales' right eye swells shut, Barrera will load up more on the left hook. Dumping right hand by Barrera. Morales is trying to keep his movement to the left. You can watch things better that way. That right eye is probably causing him some visions problem, so he's not moving over to the right. Keep it to the left. Keep everything to the left. We've seen three different fights so far. The tactical introduction, the boxing match dominated by Morales, and now for the last two rounds, the slugging match begins, and Barrera's winning that. Sharp combination by Barrera. Morales' activity level way down. Mexico City fighter taking over. Stop! Well, it's not nothing now, George. Now the country boy. The country boy takes over. Yep. Eric Morales coming right back with left-right combinations. But that eye is going to cause him a little too many problems right now. Yep, the blood is starting to flow again from the corner of the eye. Look at the courage stop, stop. of Morales as he backs off and lands another shot. Now the corner man plays. How much do you pay these guys? And for what reason? Well, Eric Morales has Miguel Diaz in his corner, one of the very best. He's got a job to do in these last three rounds coming up. Hard right hand and another left by Barrera. Big Watch shot. Eric Morales taking a lot of punishment in this round. You're not throwing enough. You've got to be more aggressive. What's the matter? Hey, don't be overconfident. The referee's not helping us any. The, the, the head butts, he didn't count. He's not doing nothing. Don't let him get, get away with anything. Put some pressure on him. Come on, don't lower your hands. Come on, we got to get going. Let's go all the way, go all out. You want, the, you want the win? You want the revenge? Go for it. Let's go for it. Deep breaths, deep breaths. Come on, he's got nothing left, so go for it. You got to throw more. Blood, sangre, is drama. Now we have drama. Harold Bloodman, how do you have it scored through nine rounds? Okay, Jim, if they give it up an awful lot of those early rounds, Marco Antonio Barrera has won three out of the last four. I got an 86-85, five rounds to four. Eric Morales, but but I say so. I don't think Eric Morales can see Barrera's left hand coming. I think that right eye is just about shut. Marco Antonio Barrera, I think he's going to take control of this fight. I have it four rounds. 
to four, one even, an even fight. Straight right hand for Morales. He's been much better in the first minute of this 10th round. Morales coming back and establishing yet again his imprint on the fight. George, it's a brave performance by the Tijuana fighter. Big left hook by Morales. You gotta understand that, Mo that Barrera was in reserve for the first five rounds. He didn't th throw anything, so now he's using his reserve. Morales, of course, has made him use some. Now he can pick up the pace. Almost as though Barrera fought the first five rounds under wraps. Waiting, waiting, waiting. So now he has some energy in reserve, but now they're evenly winded. What Both guys are tired now. They both expel some energy. But the difference in the fight may turn out to be that right eye. The good thing about Morales, he's accustomed to fighting swollen and cut eyes. He's going to have to fight. He's going to have to fight back and try to keep Barrera on the defensive. That's the best way to protect his eye. Keep in mind that Morales was much more marked up than Barrera in the first fight, and he won it. A courageous 10th round here by Eric Morales, who has re-encamped, re-established his initiative in the fight once again. Good body shot by Morales. Left hook, right cross. Barrera on the defensive again. Now Marco comes back. Jay Navy is strong, isn't he? Just move your hand. Heavyweight. That's the kind of referee I like to see. Morales had to turn, turn the tide around, and he has done it in this round. Man, what the corner will do with his eye. Morales is trying to take a breather. He's throwing a lot of shots. It's up to Morales now to keep the pressure on him. Don't let him breathe. Now he's allowed him to rest, and that's when his trouble start. In a close fight, Barrera seems to have taken a lot of the 10th round off, and Morales regains a foothold. Okay, here, hold this for me. Hold this down. Put a lot of water. Never not two more rounds. You see that it hurt him? Let him finish him off. You gotta throw those straight right hands. The referee is allowing him to do whatever he wants. Well, he's not going to do all that. He's cut, he can't see. We got him now. We got it now. Pressure him. With a lot of pressure. Pressure him. You got it, you son of a gun. Second out, second out. The first fight was an action adventure movie. This fight is more of a drama. Changes in fortune. The bad eye of Morales suddenly playing Stop. Stop. into a different kind you, of boss. narrative. Could become a suspense thriller. Power shots in round 10. Morales landed 23 of 51. Barrera 4 of 17. It was clearly Eric Morales' comeback round. Now he's taking the jabs. Allowing Barrera to start jabbing him. That's, you don't want that. Tremendous counter-punching by Morales. He can certainly still see out of the left eye. Big shot by He hit Barrera. him behind the head. He hit him behind the head. He, he did indeed. The referee to say something, but they're not going to help you. Yeah, but he ducked his head all the way down right in front of him, George. Stop, 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 stop. Mux. Herrera seems focused on trying to win the 11th round which would shorten the margin on the scorecards once again, the way we see it. Chopping stop, right stop. hand by Barrera no, there. Box. Good combo by Morales. Big right hand by Barrera. Trading shots. That Barrera is strong as an ox. 
flow. He's been down against Kennedy McKinney, Agapito Sanchez, and he was knocked out by Junior Jones. But in recent fights, Barrera's had an iron chin. That's that backing away with your hands down by Morales again. Got to keep your hands up if you back Box. away. Box. Pretty even round. They both landed some shots. Barrera's been the aggressor. so much hate for one another. And that's why the referee has seen that although they didn't mess up their strategy at all, they have that much hate for one another and yet keep your hands up and play the game of boxing. Into the corner. Stop! Herrera trying to apply Box. more damage to Morales' right eye. <laughs> Tough round to score. But if Barrera has won that round, then the fight may be on the table in the 12th. One more. You got to control it all. You got to hit it all. I think we're, I think we're losing. I think we're losing. We, got need to, we need to win the round. Give me some water. Yeah, please. You got to knock him down. Okay, I want you to come at him. Put pressure on him. Everything. Give it all. Give it all. Don't hold anything back. Don't leave nothing for tomorrow. Throw it all. Judges at ringside, Chuck Campa of Las Vegas, Dwayne Ford of Las Vegas, Mike Liana of Illinois. In the 11th round, Barrera by CompuBox numbers threw more, landed more, landed more power shots. Fight may be on the table here. Harold, how do you have it? Stop, stop. I don't know, Jim. 106, 103, Eric Morales. Jim, I'll tell you something. In the 11th round, Eric Morales certainly had that right eye closed, and a lot of times Marco was swinging it in. I mean, Eric was moving around it, and Marco was missing him. I gave that round to Eric also. I think he's got a 7-4 to four lead. 106-103. You heard Barrera's corner telling him they thought he was behind. He seems to be trying for a big round or maybe the knockout. What you Night think? card, Barrera needs a knockdown to have a chance to win the fight. You got to admit, we're watching this great fight, but it was Larry Merchant who no, never no, no, stopped no, no, talking no, no. about the rematch. That's why that fight has happened. You think I brought in these 13 or 14,000 people? In oh, yes, charge? you did. <laughs> Big right hand by Barrera. Stumps Morales. He hits him in the mouth again. Wait, stop. What a chin Eric Morales shows against this assault. Barrera has landed a half dozen big shots since the start of the round. Barrera looking for a 10-8 round. No. Maybe if he'd have fought some of the early rounds yep, this way, he wouldn't right. need it. Amen. And there's the Morales rally. Morales takes a chance when he oh, does oh, this. Oh, stop, he opens stop, himself up to big counters. As long as he keeps his head on, Mar on Barrera's chest, he's out of harm's way. Just don't back away. Don't back away. And don't duck to where Barrera can hit him with the left hook. Hard right hand by Morales. Barrera continues to attack. in the clear. No, 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 stop. Box.
Was it too much, too late for Barrera? And while Morales' supporters yeah, loft him onto yeah, their yeah. shoulders and parade him around the ring, Marco Antonio Barrera still has his feet on the canvas and seems mildly disappointed. In the 12th round, by CompuBox numbers, Barrera landed 38 of 88, by far his biggest round of the fight, a 33-15 edge in Power Connect. If you stay back and you hold off for five rounds like that, you gotta go for a knockout. He didn't get a knockout tonight, all because he waited too long. Nobody's ever knocked Derek Morales out, and maybe nobody ever will. Despite the seemingly skinny frame, Morales has an iron chin. A little piece of leather, but he's well put together. <laughs> Born above a boxing gym in Tijuana, Eric Morales, the pride of El Norte, has made his fans proud tonight with a comeback performance, his best in two and a half years. But was it enough to beat Marco Antonio Barrera? I don't like a fighter giving up that many rounds early on and then coming back, still in the crowd as he did. He did still the fans. Let's mind, take a look at some action from the 12th round, George, as Barrera unloaded the kitchen trying to find a way to seal the deal. He tried his best, but at the same time, Morales was always fighting back, and he, he had fear that he may catch him one point or another. Toe to toe. This is the way they finished in noble and memorable fashion. Larry, Larry Merton at one point said it was nothing. I, I totally have to differ. If it weren't for the unreal nature of its predecessor, this too would be seen as a great fight. Harold Letterman, how did you score it? Okay, Jim, 115-113. Eric El Terrible Morales, seven rounds to five. Jim, just as George said, Marco Antonio Barrera just started too late. Probably gave up at least four out of the first six rounds. By the time he got started, Eric Morales had too big an early lead. Certainly, I don't know what in God's name Marco Antonio Barrera was thinking about in the 10th round. The 10th round was absolutely unreal. Morales' eye completely closed, and he dominates the round, and I actually thought he won the 11th round as well. Barrera George. comes back big in the 12th to make it close, but it's still Morales, 115-113. And Harold, I gotta say one thing. I never score the fights. I have nothing but the greatest respect for you. I think you're dead wrong about the 11th round, and if you are, that would make it an even fight. George, what's you feeling? I agree with the judge this time. <laughs> I really do. So but you I don't see Morales. as well as I used to. <laughs> oh, no, no, you see pretty well, George. <laughs> All right, they wait for the decision again. Let's go to Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, the two best featherweights in the world came into the ring, but now only one will leave as the very best. We go to the Budweiser scorecards. Chuck Jampa scores the contest 116 to 112. Mike Gliana and Dwayne Ford have it 115 to 113. All for the winner by unanimous decision. De Ciudad de Mexico, Marco Antonio Herrera. What a reversal. For two and a half years, Marco Antonio Barrera's constituents have complained about the decision in the first fight. Now it's time for Morales' people to lodge the same complaint. That's right, poetic justice. Now the shoe is on the other foot. And Morales bolts out of the ring without sticking around for any post-fight conversation. Morales is running to the dressing room, infuriated by the decision. Eric Morales must feel like he can't get a break against Marco Antonio Barrera when he won the fight the first time around. Virtually nobody gave him credit for it. This time he loses on a night when it appeared he deserved a better fate. 
I think Sutter. there are a lot of people who still want to hear from Morales. I hope there's an interview later on. Such are the vagaries of subjective judging in our sport. And now let's go to Larry Merchant in the ring with Barrera. All right, thank you very much, Jim. Congratulations, Marco Antonio. Your corner said they thought you were losing in the late rounds. Did you think you were behind? Bueno, yo, yo trabajé para, para boxearlo, como lo dije, voy a pelear más inteligente. No vieron tantos golpes como la vez pasada, pero tomamos la iniciativa todo el tiempo. Yeah. I worked uh, to outbox him. I knew I could outbox him. Uh, it was a close fight and I did my job. Did you come into this fight determined just to outbox him because it seemed in the first half of the fight that you were not as effective as you had been when you had been fighting him in the first fight. You came into this fight determined that he was going to box you because in the first part of the fight, he was not going to throw a lot of punches, he was going to box you a lot. That was the idea because his plan was to grab me as when I entered, when I was in the first fight, I was going to throw a lot of punches. Entonces lo tuvimos que boxear a mi, a mi distancia. That was the plan to come in and I'll box him because he would grab me when I would, would rush him and he would be a counter puncher. So my plan was to I'll box him. Tell us, do you think that there were any words between you during the fight? I'm in Morales. Between you and Morales. ¿Hubieron alguna palabra entre tú y Morales durante la pelea? Pues sí, él me dijo una, una grosería. Eh, no me acuerdo en qué rago me empezó a decirme la pelas. No sé qué, qué se deba a eso, pero... No perdimos la calma y seguimos boxeando como como estuvimos estudiando. Yes, there was a few words in in the in, in one of the rounds. He did insult me somewhat by saying some gross things, but I kept my cool and won the fight. Do you think that because you didn't get the decision in the first fight when you thought you should get it, and many people agree with you, that in some way this was a reversal of that, that many people thought Morales might have won. But this time they gave it to you. Piensas tú que por tú no porque tú no ganaste la la decisión en la primera pelea y mucha gente creían que tú habías ganado. Esta vez muchas personas creen que Morales ganó y ahora esto tú recibiste la decisión. ¿Qué piensas? Bueno, yo creo que vamos a ver los comentarios de toda la gente. No dudamos en que ganamos. Hicimos una pelea inteligente y pues vamos a verle la respuesta a la gente ya que salgamos aquí de la arena. Uh, we're going to see what the public says, what the, who uh, the opinion is, who really won. Uh, we fought an intelligent fight. We'll wait to see what the critics say. Thank you again. Congratulations. We'll be seeing you again soon. And now, back to Jim Lampley. All right, and as you were listening to that interview, Eric Morales just went right past us, going back into the ring from his dressing room. We presume that after having gone to the dressing room, Morales has thought the situation over briefly and decided that he wants to be as sportsmanlike as possible. He's returning to the ring where maybe we're going to get a conversation with Larry Merchant in a moment. Meanwhile, the three judges' scorecards. You heard the scores, 116-12, 115-13, 115-13. And George Foreman, if there's a point to be made here, it reminds me of the night that Oscar De La Hoya lost to Felix Trinidad. If you want to win one half of a fight, win the second half of the fight. That's when the judges are going to give you credit. All three judges giving five of the last six rounds to Barrera. All three judges, incidentally, Harold, gave the 11th to Barrera, as I suspected they would. But the bottom line is, they all gave five of the last six rounds to Barrera. We'll talk more about that when we come back. Let's go to Larry with Eric Morales. All right, thank you very much. Eric, why was this fight for the first half a boxing contest? Why was this fight for the first half a boxing contest? Bueno, yo me yo vine a trabajar, él este creo yo se guardó hasta el último creyendo que yo no había entrenado, yo no había hecho lo necesario para llegar a esta pelea. Yo hice mi trabajo bien, de inicio hasta el décimo round trabajé bastante bien, creo que iba a round a round ganando, uno que otro lo perdí. Los dos últimos presionó bien, fueron divididos, pero creo que hice un gran trabajo y creo que gané la pelea. I, th I came to uh, well prepared to do uh, I'll box him. I guess he reserved himself for the end, but I was still doing well round by round at the end. I thought I, I still think I won the fight. Tell us how much your bad eye affected the fight in the last rounds. Dino, ¿cuánto de tu tu ojo que está herido te afectó en en la pelea? Bueno, al último ya porque algo algo me me cubría y me estuve tallando varias veces. 
no podía ver, pero estuve manejando bien con el jab abajo, buena derecha abajo. Creo que cuando lo tumbé fue un buen golpe, fue un golpe antes, fue un buen golpe, pero bueno, así pasan las cosas. Creo, creo en Dios y creo que Dios es justo. Y si ellos creen que no van a ir, bueno, The eye affected me a little bit, I can hardly see, but I still thought I did enough, I controlled the fight. If it's, it's going to be some justice, if they thought they won the fight, well, so be it. Do you feel that because of the controversial nature of the first fight decision, that they wanted to give it to Barrera to even it up? Piensa tú, porque tú recibiste la decisión otra vez, cuando fue la pelea muy controversial, que esta vez querían empatar la cosa, igualarla, para dársela a él. No lo sé, aquella vez yo presioné, yo hice el trabajo, esta vez yo volví a hacer el trabajo, yo presioné, yo fui adelante tirando golpes. Creo que, como te digo, las cosas pasan. ¿Qué puedo hacer yo? I, I don't know if that's the case, but in the first fight, I pressured the fight, I did the same thing in this fight. Uh, what can you do? Should there be a third fight? ¿Debe haber una tercera pelea? Depende de... Yo no sé, ah, vamos a platicar, vamos a ver qué dice Arum, vamos a ver qué, qué, qué pasó, qué, qué sucedió. Y pues ni modo, y antes que nada, pues quiero mandarle un saludo a toda la gente, creo que no los defraudé, hice mi trabajo. Un saludo a don José Suleiman y a toda la gente que me apoyó para llegar a esta pelea. Ah, uh, probably so, I'm not sure, I'm going to speak to Bob Arum. I think I did my job, I hope I didn't disappoint the, the public, uh, Mr. Suleiman. I did my job and I uh, thought I won it. Thank you very much, Eric, for coming back out. And now to you, Jim. First loss of Eric Morales' career, and George, here's my point. On the night when Oscar De La Hoya lost to Felix Trinidad, and he appeared to many of us to win the first seven rounds of the fight, none of the three judges gave him credit for having done so. Tonight, Eric Morales might have won five of the first six rounds of this fight. None of the three judges gave him credit for it. But they did give Barrera five of the last six. My point is, if you're going to win half a fight, win the second half. <laughs> the point is, Morales, Eric Morales, he won that fight tonight. And there's no diplomatic fashion. You can explain it away. He outpointed him, and then when, the time, when it came time to fight, he fought better, too. Uh, the, it'll go down in the record book as a loss uh, for Morales, but it, the fans should be well encouraged. This and, boy has got the stuff. And as you said, poetic justice, because two and a half years ago, we would have stood here and said, Tia Barrera won the fight and didn't get the decision. Barrera is a fine fighter also. Oh, they're, but they're Can't both take terrific. anything away from him. They're both terrific. And, and as I say, you know, if maybe the first half of the fight was tactical, but no less exciting to my eyes because you saw it, you watched two great fighters searching for a way to win the I fight. I was so excited doing that fight. And the last half of the fight was sensational. Let's take a look at the final CompuBox numbers and you will see that they landed an almost equal number of punches. They threw an almost equal number of punches and they landed at exactly the same connect percentage. Good enough? Power punches. Here's where Morales had a small edge. Landing 135 to 117. Throwing five more, landing at a slightly higher connect percentage. Again, a tiny statistical margin, but a margin nevertheless. Larry, your uh, final thoughts on uh, a tumultuous evening here. Well, I think that uh, finally the Supreme Court got it right. It got it right in the sense that two injustices equal a justice. The way these two fellows fought, two times, 24 rounds, neither one deserved to have an edge over the other. Both de 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 deserve to have a victory apiece. Let's see a third fight. Yeah, well, <laughs> maybe they will indeed uh, engage in a third fight. Yesterday, I asked Marco Antonio Barrero, well, what's better, to have walked away with the W and have nobody say that you won the fight? or to have walked away the way you did with an official loss on the record and have everybody say that you were better than you've ever been before. Tomorrow, maybe we ask the same question of Morales. Boxing is funny that way. Sometimes the drama leaves you with questions at the end, but there's no shortage of drama, nevertheless. Let's go back up to James Brown. All right, Jim, thank you very much. And uh, wow, Emmanuel, let me just be very candid with you. One injustice in no way suggests that another